Hi, Just a Viking here. Welcome to part two of my two part tutorial on Indigo materials for iClone users. In part one, we talked about the differences between iClone and Indigo materials, and then learned how to download Indigo materials and apply them to objects in your scene. The result was much more gem like than the material provided by iClone, but left us puzzled as to why the diamond was so blue instead of clear. This tutorial is going to cover the two main reasons why the diamond was so blue. At the end, I'm going to have a couple teasers for upcoming tutorials. Assuming you've watched part one, let's dive into the mystery of the blue diamond. When I first saw the diamond turn blue instead of clear, I had two thoughts. Was it supposed to be blue? Is it because the diamond is big? A third option, that I had made a mistake was immediately discarded as being too implausible. Although I'm not a gemologist, I do know diamonds come in different colors. White, yellow, and of course, there's the famous blue Hope Diamond. Hmm, that looks a lot like my diamond. Going back to the Diamond and Materials download page on IndigoRenderer.com, I did not see any mention of it being a blue diamond. Not only that, the sample image is extremely clear, with little to no blue tint. But when the materials author highlighted the fact that this is a physically accurate diamond material, he felt it worth mentioning that size matters. It says, correct scene scale is very important for accurate results. Well, let's look at my image again. Look at my diamond compared to the Rubik's Cube. I'm used to Rubik's Cubes being about 4 inches, or 10 centimeters on a side. That means my diamond might be as large as 6 inches across. Actually, it's even worse than that. Let's go back to iClone for a moment. See those grid lines? They default to a 1 meter spacing. So let's put Mason in the scene. Yipes! My diamond isn't 6 inches across, it's closer to 6 feet across. That's not just unusually large. That's just plain ridiculous. So, leaving Mason in the scene to provide some scale, I shrunk my diamond. I made a variety of sizes, ranging from large, like the Hope Diamond, down to a more plausible size. All the lighting and other options were left the same. I exported the scene to Indigo, stopped the render, and using the techniques from part one of this tutorial, I replaced the diamond material for all of my diamonds. Feeling confident, I rendered the scene. You can see now it's starting to look more like a diamond than a sapphire, so it was encouraging. After rendering the scene the same amount as before, let's see the finished image. Well, that's puzzling. My diamonds were a little bit better, but they are still really, really blue. Disturbingly blue, I would say. So what could be going on? What's the culprit here? And then inspiration hit me. The sky. In the Indigo object browser, I found the sky and saw that it has a JPEG file associated with it. It acts sort of like a sky dome in iClone. So check out the blue sky image that iClone exported. Um, let's just say it's extremely blue. So I edited the image and toned down the blue and applied that new image to my sky. I rendered again. Hey, this is looking encouraging. Let's see how that turned out. Now my diamonds really, truly look like diamonds, not sapphires. I also replaced the default floor with something called sofa cloth and tiled it in iClone so the scale made it look like a Berber carpet. Yep, at that point, I was a happy Viking. So let's recap what we learned. First, because Indigo's materials are physics-based, the size of a transparent material will matter. iClone's materials are simplistic representations, meant for real-time rendering, so a lot of shortcuts are taken. In iClone, you could have a block of glass, or a diamond, the size of a house, and it would still be perfectly transparent. See what I mean? I'm not even going to waste my time rendering that in Indigo. Second, Indigo materials are affected by the environment, more so than iClone materials are. That's because of the fully realized reflections, and how light plays on the realistic materials. 
Shortly after publishing part one of this two-part tutorial, I learned a few more things that I simply hadn't gotten around to learning. Also, part one was made with a beta version of iClone, and some parts weren't working at the time. So my update and extension to part one of this two-part tutorial will be called part three of two, updates to part one. I'm also excited about my other project, which is a miscellaneous collection of tips and things I've learned about using Indigo. Among other things, it will cover how to get better results faster, graphics card acceleration, setting limits on render times, saving and restarting your renders, light bulbs, and more. Until then, I'll be seeing you on the forums, and happy rendering!